Today, we live in a world run by Black Panther, Miles Morales, America Chavez, and a beautiful cavalcade of superheroes of color. However, it wasn't always this way, and there's a lot of work still to be done. In fact, there's one character, and the creatives behind him, that just doesn't get discussed nearly enough. But before we get started, please be sure to subscribe to the Total Nerd channel, leave a comment below, and let us know what Total Nerd topics you'd like us to explain next. And with that, let's do it. Created by Dwayne McDuffie, Robert L. Washington III, and John Paul Leon, Virgil Ovid Hawkins, aka Static, quickly became the flagship character of one of the 90s most interesting creative experiments, the DC Comics-backed Milestone Comics. Launching with four titles, Milestone's high concept was something that still rings true to this day. Diverse superheroes made by people of color intended to be consumed by everyone. The chief success of this company, founded by Dennis Cowan, Dwayne McDuffie, Michael Davis, and Derek T. Dingle, was a baseball cap wearing, electric powered, pseudo Spider-Man type character named Static. He was so popular, he spawned a long-running animated TV show, he made appearances on the Justice League, and even had multiple comic book reboots. But before we get into that, we need to start at the beginning. For those unaware, in the early 1990s, some of the biggest artists in Marvel Comics banded together and decided to form their own comic book company, Image Comics. They were tired of not sharing in the enormous wealth that their titles were generating for the House of Ideas and, instead, opted to go into business for themselves. They wanted to own their own work. They wanted to create their own characters, own the rights, and be able to leverage their massive fan bases into building their own empires, not just furthering the one that Jack Kirby and Stan Lee had built. Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Eric Larson, Will Sportacio, Mark Silvestri, and Jim Valentino formed Image Comics in 1992. It became the number three comic book company overnight with their debut titles Youngblood, Spawn, Cyberforce, Wildcats, Savage Dragon, and Shadowhawk tearing up the sales charts. Spawn number one alone sold 8 million copies, not to mention the fact that millions of copies of both Wildcats and Youngblood also flew off the shelves. This success caused everyone to sit up and take notice, like literally everyone. Marvel and DC were running scared. Creators from all across the industry sat up and said, hey, maybe I could do that too. Maybe I could make some comics that I could own the rights to instead of selling the rights down the river like I have to working for these giant companies founded in the 1940s. And you know who did just that? The four men who would go on to found Milestone Comics. Well, sort of. The rights side of things is a bit complex, but you know, for now, the four men who would go on to found Milestone Comics. They took their plan for Milestone to Paul Levitz, the publisher of DC at the time. DC wanted a secret weapon. They needed something to compete with Image. They wanted to prevent the Milestone creators from going across the street and setting up shop with Marvel. The downside of this is that the Milestone founders probably wouldn't own all of their own creations like the Image founders did, but we'll get more to that later. The important thing is that they would have the support and financial backing that one of the largest comic book companies in the history of the world could offer. The powerhouse writer behind the initial wave of books was Dwayne McDuffie, known for his work on Deathlock and Damage Control. He would eventually go on to work on the animated Justice League shows. A little known fact about McDuffie is that he was a literal child genius. He attended college at age 12 and was originally planning to be a physicist before deciding to pursue a writing career more seriously. The Milestone Comics books would launch with four interconnected titles, each one starring a black superhero and worked on by predominantly black creators. The first ongoing series, which lasted 42 issues from 1993 to 1997, was created by McDuffie and M.D. Bright. It was titled Icon and followed the adventures of the Superman-esque alien who crash-landed on Earth in the 1800s and has lived on the planet as a black man ever since. Now using the name Augustus Freeman IV, he partnered with Rocket, a human who uses alien technology to attempt to protect the citizens of a city named Dakota. Blood Syndicate would go on to be the next book launched by the company, which also lasted until 1997, created by McDuffie and co-writer Ivan Villas Jr. and Dennis Cowan. As you might deduce, Blood Syndicate is a multicultural superpowered gang that roams through the back streets of Dakota. Characters like Tech Nine, Flashbang, Dog, and Brick House, among a legion of others, comprise the cast. This was basically the milestone version of the X-Men. Hardware, the third launch title, starts Kurt Metcalf, 
who was created by Dwayne McDuffie and Dennis Cowan. The book is basically the milestone version of Iron Man. He's a genius inventor who uses high-tech gadgets and a robot suit to fight crime. In an interesting twist, though, these familiar tropes settle into a unusual status quo. Edwin Alva, the investor funding Hardware's inventions, is secretly the same mob boss that Hardware is attempting to bring down. And finally we have Static, the crown jewel of the Dakotaverse. Virgil Hawkins is caught in an explosion of high-tech gas that grants people in the city of Dakota superpowers. After learning some hard lessons, he decides to take up the duties of a superhero, defending the weak and unstable. The character's youth and energetic nature, coupled with Jean-Paul Leon's striking and visually inventive artwork, propelled the character into becoming a nearly instant fan favorite. The milestone books would run steadily for the next four years until the realities of the comic book market were too intense to bear. In the back half of the 90s, the truth came out. Everyone wanted comic books to be stadium rock, but they were probably more along the lines of lounge jazz in a wig. The massive numbers and millions of copies being sold were actually just a reader base of roughly a few hundred thousand people buying eight, nine, and sometimes ten copies of the same book and then stocking them away in the hopes that they'd someday be worth millions of dollars, like the comics in the 1930s. But with everyone buying them, this fallacy just never bore any fruit. As such, many of the speculators who came into the comics industry looking to get rich left, and the industry began to implode. Sales plummeted, publishers went under overnight, and stability was a thing of yesteryear. Milestone was no different than any of these other publishers. Looking for a way to survive, they either had to find an investor or sell the company fully to DC. The question of character ownership, which was always a gray concerning Milestone, was now pretty concretely settled. Milestone, well, they sold to DC, and now they owned Static, Icon, Rocket, Blood Syndicate, Hardware, and all the other wonderful characters that Milestone spawned. The company kept limping forward with DC's assistance, but they eventually were closed down, just four years after their initial publication. It really is a shame, and yet it's so much more than that, because... Static premiered on September 23, 2000. The show featured the voice of veteran actor Phil Lamar as Static, and quickly developed a cult following. The show lasted for about 52 episodes, ending on May 22, 2004. It was set up in the same universe as Batman, Superman, and the Justice League shows that the WB was releasing at the time. And in the genius foresight of producers, Dwayne McDuffie was brought in to write on the show, and Dennis Cowan was brought in to direct letting the show an air of authenticity and faithfulness to the source material. I broke free from his mind control, you can too! Static still should have worn that black Malcolm X hat in the show. That was like the coolest superhero costume ever. Static would prove to be so popular, he'd make appearances as Old Man Static in the future Justice League with Terry McGinnis of Batman Beyond towards the end of the Justice League show. Milestone lay dormant for a solid decade until a relaunch miniseries titled Milestone Forever officially put Dakota back on the map, both metaphorically and literally on the map in the DC Universe. This spawned a new, relatively short-lived static book during the New 52 relaunch. This was all intended to lead towards more Milestone content. Unfortunately, Dwayne McDuffie passed away suddenly, just after the release of the all-star Superman film that he had written for Warner Brothers. When DC did announce that they were planning another Milestone relaunch, this time, with Reggie Hudlin involved, McDuffie's widow came forward with a legal suit, saying that Dwayne's ownership of the characters were not being respected. The lawsuit dragged on for years, until it was ultimately settled out of court. And wait for it! There's a new static book in the works, with Vita Ayala writing, with art by Criss Cross and Nicholas Draper Ivy, and covers by Kari Randolph. And that's just one of the new books that will be premiering under a new Milestone Returns banner. Icon and Rocket, written by Reggie Hudlin and Leon Chills, with art by Doug Braithwaite, and Hardwire, written by Brandon Thomas, and art by the masterclass team of Dennis Cowan and Bill Sienkiewicz. Four years in active publication, a TV show appearance on Justice League and Young Justice, perennial rumors of a feature film, at one point with Jaden Smith being eyed for the role of Virgil, Milestone, its creators, and its preeminent character have made a long-lasting impact on the pop culture landscape. The latest announcement is that Reggie Hudland and Michael B. Jordan are preparing a Static Shock feature film for Warner Brothers. Will it make it all the way into production? Well, it's too early to tell. Milestone does have a history of making announcements and then nothing happening. 
However, it begs the question, what does the future hold for the city of Dakota? If the past is any indication, bright things. So what do you think? Will we see a static movie anytime soon? Will Phil Lamar get a cameo in it? Will these new milestone books make a massive impact the way the old ones did? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe for more Total Nerd videos.